It's a new year and I am excited about my new calendar book. One of my New Year's goals is to memorize more scripture. One of my favorite scriptures is Romans 12, 1, 2. I appeal to you brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You kids hear a lot from me as your River Kids teacher, but I wanted to share my own story with you about how Jesus changed my life. Hint, it has something to do with my calendar book. What do you think that means? Well, before we get started, another goal I have this year is to keep being active. One way to be active is to run in place or do jumping jacks. And when you get back, I'll tell you what my calendar has to do when Jesus changing my life. Growing up as a kid, I really liked to help other people. I liked to volunteer a lot. I would do things like gather food items for food drives with my friends. I would sign up to be a cheerleader at local 5K races. Um, I would serve food at a nearby kitchen. I always wanted to help my teachers after school. I was just looking for a way to help someone out, just help people out. And since I was doing this even as a young girl, people noticed me. Adults and teachers would tell me that I was doing a good job, that I was making a difference, and I like to hear those words. I really like to hear those words. It made me feel really happy and good inside. Um, so I looked for more good things to do that other people would notice. Um, and then I went to college after high school, and I didn't know anyone there. So I went to an event to sign up for some groups to meet new people. And there were a lot of ways that I could spend my time while I was away from home. So I signed up to help the theater group sew costumes. I signed up to help out at the horse barn. Um, my friend also asked me to sign up for Bible study. So I did that too. I'd never been to a Bible study, but I wanted to make her happy. Um, and I knew it would make her happy to go with her. And it sounded like a thing that good people do. So once my classes got started, my days got really busy. I had a lot of schoolwork to go to do, a lot of classes to go do, and a lot of people that I said I would help. <laughs> I was having a hard time keeping up with all of the things that I said I would do. I tried to do them all so people didn't get mad at me. I wanted them to be happy with me. I went to my first Bible study. I'd never been to a Bible study before, but I had a Bible that my dad gave me when I went to college. Um, and the girl leading it asked us to open up to John 3.16 and I did not even know how to find the Bible verse. I didn't know what those little dots meant. I didn't know what she was asking, but she kindly helped me find it. And we talked that night about how we were all sinners and that the cost for sin was death and that Jesus loved me so much that he paid the price with his own death so that I could live in him. And I didn't have to be sad about it because then he defeated death by raising to life three days later. And he now currently reigns beside God the Father. And after that night, I kept going back to Bible study, even though I had other things to do um, and I was busy. I was becoming more aware that my busyness and my people pleasing and impatience were sin. And I was drawn to keep hearing more about Jesus. I had been feeling so overwhelmed with all of the things I said I would do for other people. And it was refreshing to be reminded each week at Bible study that I could start over, that Jesus could make me new and that it was ultimately most important what he thought of me, not what other people thought of me, and that he loves me so much that he died for me. And I never prayed a prayer out loud in front of other people to give my life to him. And it must've just been this slow process in my heart um, after I heard the gospel that first time at the Bible study. By the end of the school year, I knew I wasn't the same person anymore. I was more focused on how to follow Jesus than how to fill my schedule. I still did things to help other people, but instead of doing them in my own strength to hear them say nice things about me, I was helping others in the strength of his Holy Spirit inside me 
because he had done so much for me and he gave me this life. And that's how my calendar book reminds me of how Jesus changed my life. And even though life gets pretty busy sometimes and there's lots of good things that I could do with my time, before I write it in my calendar or say yes to someone, I ask him if he wants me to do that thing. And in that way, I try to present my life as a living sacrifice to him. While I still make plans and set goals, I leave it up to him to direct my steps and my path. If something happens that prevents me from doing what I set out to do, I just take that as him redirecting my steps. And I thank him, even if it's something that I don't understand yet. Thank you for listening to my story and about how Jesus changed my life. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for um, these kids and any adults who are listening to this video. Thank you for rescuing me. Um, and thank you for the women in that college Bible study who shared the gospel with me each week. Thank you for um, new life in you. And I pray um, that these river kids would, would trust in you and that their eyes and their ears would be open to you pursuing them in their life. Um, and I pray that um, when they see calendars and planners and notebooks, that they would remember that you are the one who writes their days and that you have good plans for them and that um, everything works out for good. That you work everything out for good for those that love you. I pray all this in your son Jesus' name, who is victorious. Amen.